Hi guys, welcome back to the Kratos Nutrition YouTube channel. We have had the announcement of the quarterfinal workouts for the individuals this year, and we now know that there are gonna be five tests. Those of you who have been following along, we got floor plans released on Monday, so we could have a good idea of what sort of movements we were expected to see, but we were waiting to hear what the rep ranges, time frames, and everything else were going to be. Uh, that wait is now over. As you'll know if you're competing in the quarterfinals this year, there are special timestamps for you to do each individual workout by. So workouts number one and two need to be done by, in the UK, Friday, 8 p.m. Workouts two, uh, three and four need to be done by Saturday, 8 p.m. and workout five by Sunday, 8 p.m. With that in mind, we're gonna break this hints and strategy video down into two pieces. Today's video is gonna cover three workouts and tomorrow's video is gonna cover the remaining two workouts. The main reason that we're gonna be covering three workouts today is because I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball out there. I would suggest, if I was competing in the individual quarterfinals this year, that I would do WOD number four first before doing anything else. So that is the four rep max front squat. The reason for this is that that workout isn't gonna take anything away from any of the other workouts, but the other workouts will take away from that score. Now, just because it is number four and you have until Saturday evening to get that workout done, it doesn't mean that you can't do that before that time. So my suggestion would be certainly getting that workout done before getting workout number two done, which is definitely gonna tax your legs and your midline and take away potential weight from that 4 max front squat. The next workout we're gonna look at is workout number one, followed by workout number two. So my suggestion would be to do workout four first, workout one second, and workout two third, all of them done on Friday. So starting with workout one, number four. As I just said, that is gonna be a four rep max front squat from the rack. Anybody that's doing this fresh, as you should be if you're doing it first, should be aiming for anything between 85 to 90% of their one rep max front squat here. Anything over 90% is gonna be a phenomenal effort for you and give you a really good boost on that leaderboard. There is a 20 minute time cap for this workout. Don't ask me why, because obviously you can just warm up for that and get this done in one hit, maybe two if needed. But there are a couple of considerations that I would think about with this workout. Most importantly, I'd consider the equipment used. So knee sleeves, weightlifting shoes, and a belt. I would suggest that you use all three of those for this workout, especially, obviously, if you're used to using those for your squats. If you're somebody like me that tends to train without knee sleeves and without a weightlifting belt, it's gonna give you that extra little bit of stability and potentially help you get that fourth rep out when things start to feel really heavy. In terms of the warm up for this event, we'd follow our standard ramp protocol. So four or five minutes on the air bike, uh, Concept 2 bike, maybe a rower, just to make sure that we're getting the blood flow in generally and raising that core temperature. And then I'd look to work uh, a ton of front rack, ankle and hip mobility, just to make sure that we're as efficient as possible with our squat mechanics and making sure that we're not gonna be leaking any potential strength as those reps go on. The other thing I consider is some single leg stabilization work and some core stabilization work just to help get that midline firing before we start to lift. So something like our previous video we did for back injuries where we looked at the McGill Big Three would be a really good thing to put into the warm up here to make sure that our midline is nice and strong before we're attempting a heavy front squat. And in terms of building up to that heavy set, I would probably do something like a set of six at 50% of my one rep max front squat, a set of five at 60%, a set of four at 70%, a set of three at 80%, and then I'd look to start to build into my heavy sets of four. I don't think that you need to be attempting more than three times in that 20 minute window. Get your first attempt out of the way at around that 80 to 85% mark and then build from there as you see fit. Remember here that a single kilo can make a massive difference on that leaderboard. So just make sure that you're, if you've got a little bit more in a tank, going one kilo more is gonna get you further up the leaderboard than trying to make a big jump four or five kilos and potentially failing uh, that attempt. Next up, we're looking at workout number one which is two separate triplets separated by a one minute rest. The first triplet is three rounds of 10 strict handstand push-ups, 10 hang power cleans at 50 and 35 pounds, and 50 double unders. Once you completed those three rounds, there's a forced minute rest before going into another three rounds of 10 kipping handstand push-ups, 10 dumbbell shoulder to overheads at the same load, and again, 50 double unders. In terms of the strategy here, you want to really consider doing a SWOT analysis of this workout. And what I mean by that is, have a look at your strengths, 
have a look at your weaknesses, and then have a look at the opportunities and the threats that that workout carries. If you're particularly good at strict and kipping handstand push-ups, then there's an opportunity here for you to attack those unbroken and find some good scores. If you know that you're gonna struggle with potentially the kipping handstand push-ups coupled with the dumbbell shoulder to overhead after doing 30 strict handstand push-ups, then there's a threat there. So you might wanna turn around and break up those strict handstand push-ups early on to save yourself for that shoulder fatigue later on in the workout. Those 50 double under pieces should be done and broken for people that are looking to get this workout finished. But equally, if you're somebody that's gonna struggle with that gymnastics, especially in terms of the strict and the kipping handstand push-ups, breaking those double unders isn't a bad idea. You don't need to jack your heart rate up. You could potentially even do five sets of 10 if you're gonna be breaking into short sets on the handstand push-ups. The break on the double unders is gonna cost you the same amount of time as a break on the handstand push-ups. So if you go unbroken on those double unders and it forces you to break one or two more times on the wall, then that's gonna hurt you overall on the leaderboard. For my warm-up for this workout, I would look at doing three rounds of 60 seconds of rowing and 20 plate jumps just to warm up my calves and my Achilles. I'd be doing that at 50 to 60% effort to start with. After that, I would then go into some overhead and lat mobility, just to make sure that we're nice and open before we start doing any pressing movements. I'd start to press a barbell and potentially some reverse grip press ups, just to get ourselves into a nice shoulder place and getting us ready to start going up onto that wall for our handstand push up work. I'd then repeat those three rounds of 60 seconds of rowing, 20 plate jumps, but I'd add 10 push ups. Uh, or five push-ups depending on how your shoulder fatigue is managed. In the same principle, but I'd add a little bit of intensity each round then, maybe starting at around 50 to 60 percent and finishing around 70 to 80 percent. I then finally repeat a little bit of overhead mobility work, get up against the wall and start warming up those handstand push-ups properly before going into my final preparation for the workout in which I would do one full round of each of the triplets with a one minute rest in between. So one round of 10 strict handstand push-ups 10 dumbbell power cleans, 50 double unders, at full pace that you're expecting to do, go in the workout, a one minute rest, and then one round of kipping handstand push-ups, dumbbell shoulder to overheads, and double unders again. This is gonna do two things. It's gonna give you a good idea of what that movement's gonna feel like under fatigue, but it's also gonna get your transitions nice and slick so you know where you want your rope to be and making sure that everything's in the right place. Final recommendations for me here is to make sure that you've got a spare rope to hand. There's nothing more frustrating than getting three quarters of the way through a workout and doing really well and suddenly your rope snaps or skags for some reason and you haven't got a spare to finish. And finally now we have workout number two, an absolute doozy of a triplet of GHDs, rope climbs and pistols. 60 GHD sit-ups, six, six rope climbs, 60 pistols, 55, 50, 44, 40 and finishing with 33 and 30. The first thing that I'd say about this workout is that it's all about pacing. There's a 20 minute time cap for this workout and there's 378 reps in there. That's nearly 400 reps, which is nearly 20 reps a minute. Most people aren't gonna come near to finishing this workout. If I asked you to do uh, a 20 minute EMOM of 20 pistols and 20 GHDs, a lot of people would struggle to get that done. And they're effectively asking you to do that with some rope climbs in between. 180 GHD sit-ups is not to be sniffed at. There's gonna be a lot of midline fatigue here and that's gonna take it out of your rope climbs as well. Certainly your ability to get your knees to your chest and get your legs as high up the rope as possible, which is gonna make things a lot more inefficient. The pistols are also gonna fry out your quads, which is gonna have a knock-on effect for the GHDs and the rope climbs as well. My suggestion here would be to go really steadily, certainly on that 60 and 50 of the GHDs. It's not gonna be won and lost here. You might even wanna take short breaks every five, 10, 15 reps, just to make sure that you're managing your heart rate and that you're not going to failure or complete fatigue. Your upper body is gonna be well rested throughout this workout and so is your grip. So if you are good at rope climbs, there's a real opportunity for you to attack those hard and make up some time here. And as far as the pistols are concerned, you just want to move as quickly as you can efficiently without trying to rush that movement and potentially jacking your heart rate up too high. I would definitely be looking to wear my lifters here because that's gonna help with that ankle and hip range on the uh, pistols and it's certainly gonna help you get through those reps a lot easier. It shouldn't hinder you on the rope climbs too much either. And be aware of the standards in terms of the height on the GHD. 
um, there's a set height from the top of the pads to where you need to reach and you want to make sure that you're using that to your advantage if you have got a GHD that's a little bit higher and you can put a riser in place that you need to make contact with rather than reaching all the way to the floor. In terms of the warm-up here, it's probably the shorter warm-up of the, uh, the three that we've discussed but I just consider a nice ramp warmer and really focus in here on doing a ton of ankle and hip mobility just to make sure that those pistols are as fluid as possible. You don't want to get sticky or inefficient in that bottom position and the more that you can open up those hips and ankles and turn these into similar sort of speed to air squats, the more that's gonna reward you throughout the workout. I'd also do some good lower back and thoracic mobilization, making sure that that reach on those GHD sit-ups is gonna help you not hinder you. And finally, if you're not somebody that's done a ton of GHDs throughout lockdown, I'd probably consider wearing a belt for this as well, just to take a little bit off your lower back. Final thoughts on workout number one and workout number two is really to know yourself in this and have a consideration of your strengths and your weaknesses. If there's a movement in there that you're particularly strong at, then there's an opportunity for you to attack that movement and allow yourself to climb that leaderboard. If there's a weakness in there, then you might need to slow things down around that weakness and just make sure that you're consolidating, potentially saving yourself some energy so you're not gonna fry out on that weakness early. The last thing you wanna do is grind to a halt early on in a workout on something like a strict handstand push-up or a GHD sit-up when there's still time on the clock that you could be chipping away through reps if you'd pace things differently. Be sure to join us tomorrow when we'll go through workouts three and five and hopefully have a little bit more insight for you there to help you smash that workout and climb up that leaderboard, hopefully get yourselves towards the semi-final. As always, if you found this useful, please like, share and subscribe. And if you've got any questions, just leave us a comment below. Take care guys, and good luck. Everybody wanna make millions, but not everybody been working. Everybody know they got brilliance, but not everybody been searching. Everybody rap about money and hoes, but they got neither. Everybody knows, always been keeping it real. Every time that I spit in the flow, I've been going to get it, they not gonna forget it. I've been going up, they've been staying afloat. My music been personal, telling my stories, I'm telling the truth, and my life been exposed. Talking to fans that we in it together, I'm never